Doki Doki Switcheroo is a very complicated mod. Saying that it's just a gender swap version of the original DDLC would be a massive disservice to the mod. This mod has oddly a ton of care put into it. All the art is mostly custom and it has remixes of the original music, which thank god because I'm getting so sick and tired of listening to the same three songs. Oh wow, look, you don't seem to be subscribed. Maybe you should change that. I don't know, that'd be pretty cool if you did. Please consider subscribing. I'm almost at 10k subscribers and it really mean a lot, so please do so. Alright, so basically, Doki Doki Switcheroo is a gender swap version of the original DDLC. You're a typical protagonist who is female, you're lazy and uninspired, but then wow, hot boys, let's go! <laughs> From the perspective of an outsider looking in, yeah, it's basically the same game. You have Natsuko, who is basically the tsundere Natsuki, Satori, who is the bubbly best friend Sayori, Mateo, who is Monica, and Yori, who is... Well, Yuri. You go and write poems, and then Act 2 hits the wall, and you wonder where it all went wrong! At first, I wasn't really into this mod because, yeah, it just seemed like a retelling of the original story, but with slight differences. And this mod knows that it's similar and really uses it to its advantage. The fact that this mod has so much care really makes this whole experience so much more different and that you can imagine. It's very easy to just say that Natsuko and Natsuki are the same character, but really, they both have a ton of differences, which I really like. Take, for example, probably my favorite character, Mateo. Mateo does share similarities to Monaco, but also has a ton of different things that makes him different. He feels a lot more pushy and kind of like he doesn't really know what he's doing half the time, which is kind of funny. <laughs> The MC is also so much more different, and thank god for that. This time around, there is way more personality for the main character. Femme MC is so like snarky and sarcastic, and it's just really entertaining to watch while she interacts with everyone. It's also just very different and feels very grounded. I love whenever she interacts with Satori because it actually feels like they're friends. Whenever I would play the original DDLC, and it's supposedly stated that Sayori and the MC are friends since childhood, but you don't really see that. Sure, you kind of see some glimpse on how they do have a little bit of chemistry, but it's mostly just MC being annoyed of Sayori's antics. In Switcheroo, however, they actually seemed more connected. There's a lot of dialogue where I just want to clap because it feels just really solid. Of course, there's still quite a bit of the original DDLC script leaking through, and you're def and you're definitely going to notice it. But it's just crazy how this mod feels like a new experience. I mean, look at this art! He's beautiful! Everyone and everything feels different, I really appreciate that. As I briefly mentioned, the music also has a slight change to reflect the boys, and it's definitely a welcomed. I've played way too many mods that reuse the original DDLC music, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's fine, of course, but, you know, there's a lot of mods out there, and eventually you get so tired of hearing the same three songs over and over and over and over. So let's pick out our favorite boy and proceed on to what I think is the best part of the mod, Act 2. The reason why I think the game is better once you reach this part is because nothing holds it back anymore and this game goes from 0 to 100 real quick. So the way Act 2 sort of begins in the original is us seeing Sayori's death, and you really think Switcheroo would do the same thing, but oddly enough when we go to see Satori, he's fine, everything works out. But if you really pay attention, there's a lot of subtle hints about what is really going on. In this case, some of the foreshadowing is actually sort of a red herring because, because you find out at the end of Act 1, the one who dies is actually Mateo. I just I just find that crazy <laughs> like you, you you think you know the plot twist and then BAM it just hits you in the face I was so shocked at this moment I really started to love this mod because it really just catches you off guard this mod really does present itself as just a gender bent DDLC but nope it's chaos that's probably my favorite aspect about this mod it really feels like it uses your knowledge of the original game against you and that's awesome I love that it really subverts expectations like this because you think you know everything to a T you think oh no because that's how the game's kind of presenting itself you know it's presenting itself as just a gender bent switch but in reality there's so much more hidden it's, it's an onion it has layers so in act 2 we have Satori, Natsuko, and Yuri and their personalities are very much turned up to 11 though sometimes it also doesn't really feel like it. Satori is no longer the calm and slightly energetic guy that he once was. He's rude and pessimistic and sometimes just, just an asshole because I guess he's funny. I don't know. He's, he's a real gamer, I guess. Yori is honestly just a creep and, and also just an asshole. And Natsuko is, I guess, a perv and more immature. I, I, I really feel bad for him, honestly, because like he gets bullied by Yori a lot. And then Satori is just like, yeah, you guys could duke it out, that's funny. <laughs> we actually learn a lot more about everyone's character, while in the original DDLC, Act 2, it kind of just felt like we were shown their bad sides, because obviously that's what Monica was trying to do. But in Switcheroo, we learn more about these character situations, Natsuko being the one I remember the most. Act 2 just feels like so much more of a darker experience than the original sometimes. I mean, let's look at the whole idea of the female MC being trapped and her trying her hardest to break through and, and for her to finally be able to control her own body. That's horrible especially when you go down the yori route in act two and oh oh god oh oh, oh god no this whole scene just 
I, I couldn't take it. I'm not really gonna show it because it's it's just gross. But basically, you know how in the original, uh, uh, she slash dies in Minecraft, <laughs> and then you just have to kind of fast forward until Monica shows up and then Act Three starts. Well, in this case, obviously Yori is the one to die. But right before this all happens, female MC finally takes back control, and then Yori sets them both on fire. And yeah, it's it's just. It's, it's, it's gross. And not to mention, there's also a little bit of a secret message. If you actually look at the history logs to see where the, the dialogue, you can actually read the female MC's thoughts. And, it, wow, I, it's, I'm just, I'm just speechless because it's, it's just uncomfortable. So, if, and yeah, so if anyone wanted to read her thoughts before and after the situation, well, now you can, I guess. It's funny because that's not even the craziest part. So in the original, you get Act 3 and it's you spending eternity with Monaco, right? But in Switcheroo, it's you and Satori, obviously, because he's the president, much like Monica was, and that's why Monica was self-aware and all that stuff. But oddly enough, when we enter Act 3, Satori has no memory of what just happened or what he did. Much like female MC, Satori has finally regained control, and plot twist, we actually get to talk to Satori. We're the ones to tell him that it's a game. So... This- okay, okay, so everything just got meta because we're the ones being like, yeah, Satori, this is a game, wow, this is a mod, like, we're the ones saying that to him! And it, it's just, it's crazy, and all the dialogue, it makes sense! Of course the person playing this game would expect this to happen and be confused that Satori isn't self-aware! And of course they would be like, oh wow, this is boring, I prefer the original, oh, this and that, like, it's so crazy and meta, it's like, what? <laughs> I, I just- I honestly have no words. When I got to this point, I was like, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, we talked to Satori, and he agrees to be deleted so he can bring back his friends. And of course, we gladly do so because we're just following the game. You know, that's what we do at the end of the original DDLC. And you know how I said that, that it wasn't the craziest part? Well, those math lads did it. It gets crazy. This is the craziest thing ever. So, the game resets, but for some reason, Satori doesn't exist. I mean, go figure, right? He was the president, Monica didn't exist when the game restarted itself. So Mateo is alive along with Natsuko and Yori. And it is revealed that this was Mateo's plan all along. Mateo knew this was a game and that he was destined to lose, so he made it so he can finally win. The one who killed Mateo at the end of Act 1 was Mateo himself, which set off the domino effect which allowed him to be brought back with nothing else in his way. Like, I- it's just- it's so- it's so crazy. I'm just speechless! And then, the game just ends with one last message. I win. You lose. Piss off. And the game just fully ends. That is just... Wow, what a fucking plot. What a... I just... That is... That's honestly 10 out of 10. I have no words. Like, that's... That's so cool. I just... Oh, what an ending. What a, what a plot twist. There was like five plot twists. This was like... This was unlike anything I've ever read. And I've enjoyed it so much. I had no thoughts or expectations when going into it. Because yeah, it's just a Doki Doki Literature Club, but with boys, right? But they knew you'd think that, so they used it to their advantage. Everyone who made this mod... The people who made this mod, y'all are geniuses. I'm, I'm honestly just so surprised. I didn't expect to like this this much. And it's funny too because like I was, you know, for someone like me who has read so many different mods, both bad and great and even in the middle, it's so refreshing to read this mod because like obviously once again I mentioned before the music, the music really gets on my nerves because everyone reuses the same DDLC music and it makes sense because that's the DDLC music. So having a little bit of a remix on it and having a little bit of your own custom music too along with all of custom art and everything, it's just so refreshing and it's so nice to experience it. Especially since that it's not just the original with a twist, there's so much more that you can find. I mentioned the secret messages when, you know, the when the whole not alive in Minecraft happened. There's a lot more secret messages that I've still that that I haven't seen yet and that I've kind of had to look up to see what else what else is there. It's insane how many more secret messages and secret poems you can you can find if you really look for it and I really like that. This game truly has a ton of care put into it and I love that so much. If you haven't yet checked out this mod, please consider doing so, but just understand that it does get pretty dark and it does get a little weird, because as I mentioned before, it's very whack and very tough to get through sometimes, but yeah, it's definitely a great experience that you won't, especially if you know the story of the original and, you, and you're like me who's played multiple mods, you're definitely gonna enjoy it. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching this video. Huge thank you for everyone who made it this far, I appreciate that so much. Also, I just want to give a thank you for the people who regularly upload DDLC content still to this day, like Kane Monger or Kane Monger, still don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, oh my god, I have no idea how to say this name. Can Candy Ella? 
Candy Isla. I, I'm so sorry, I'm so bad with names, but yeah. Thank you so much for still uploading DDLC content. It really means a lot. I use their footage, so if you wanna go check out more mods from them, so Candy Isla and Kane Manga, they pretty much played every single mod, which I, that's how I find a lot of my mods too. But um, yeah, I guess I don't really have much more to say. Just, uh, I just wanna give a huge thank you. I'm almost at 10K subscribers and I'm just really excited. Like, ah, oh, I really just wanna keep making more content. I've never been this excited to make content ever. So yeah, oh, I'm a feel <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, I guess I have no much more to say. So I'll go ahead and stop rambling already. Uh, yeah, thank you all. And uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye.